Hello, I'm Bruce Russell. As an art historian, I have a particular interest in the history of Canadian collections and collectors. I'm sitting at the desk of Frederick Cleveland Morgan in the study of his country house, Le Sabot, which is on the western end of the island of Montreal, on the Lac de Deux Montagnes. Morgan is best remembered as one of the outstanding shapers, in a certain sense, of the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, its breadth of collections and the focus of the museum's activity for the past century has really been shaped in a very, very significant way by Morgan's contribution. One of the most influential cultural philanthropists of his generation, Morgan, um, not only through personal generosity as a collector, but also as a kind of impresario, organized the uh, breadth uh, and uh, richness of the Montreal Museum's collection. Prior to that, of course, the Art Association was founded much earlier. It was primarily focused on what were uh, considered by the Victorians, the fine arts, on painting and to a limited extent on sculpture. But Morgan and his generation shifted in a unique way the um, breadth of the collection. Morgan was committed to expanding the collection to include, as he put it, the finest things made by all humanity throughout all of time. This was an unusual collecting policy for Canadian museums, which maintained that Beaux-Arts uh, emphasis uh, of the Victorians to this day. There's no, really no other collection in the country uh, that does that. It's an approach that's more typical of American and French museums, whereas in museums like the Art Gallery of Ontario or the National Gallery of Canada have uh, followed a more British model, which saw uh, picture galleries as, as having a more elevated status than museums of decorative arts. Morgan was committed to building collections of objects by tribal and indigenous people from around the world, as well as in North America. He was interested in Asian and African art and the art of ancient peoples of the Mediterranean and, and uh, of Asia. His country house, Le Sabot, where we are today, is a particularly fine example, late though, of the arts and crafts movement. Most of the houses here in Senneville uh, were built a generation earlier by an older generation of Montreal families uh, that otherwise lived uh, permanently in the Golden Square Mile. These were mostly Anglophone, but also some Francophone families that comprised the business and administrative and uh, cultural elite of uh, Montreal society in the uh, turn of the century era. Morgan's father, James Morgan, had bought land here in Senneville in the early 1880s and built a house, which is uh, to the, slightly to the south of this, this uh, property where we are now, a house called Greystains, which was designed by the Maxwell brothers and built in the then fashionable shingle style that had been made popular by uh, residents of places like Newport Beach and, and uh, St. Andrews. Uh, in, no, in New Brunswick. Morgan had spent his childhood here along the water uh, in this ample uh, piece of land, forests uh, and farms in, surrounding it. He and his brothers um, played uh, in a, a beautiful, uh, wonderful playhouse that their father built for them on the shore of the lake in the form of a stone castle-like tower. Uh, and they gathered uh, Huron pottery shards and collected natural history specimens. And uh, all in all, uh, their childhood here in Centerville must have been full of rich and, and wonderful memories. This study here at Le Sabot represents the range of Morgan's very, very eclectic interests. Around the wall, you see inset 18th century English and Dutch Delft tiles. There are Venetian 
glass wall sconces. There's Provencal uh, European uh, furniture. Uh, the, um, his desk here is a William and Mary English piece. Uh, behind in the windows are small fragments of medieval stained glass. And uh, behind me, you'll see Asian objects. His taste was extremely eclectic, and that is reflected in the decor of the house. Today, we tend to associate arts and crafts domestic architecture with the interiors of designers like Frank Lloyd Wright or Voisy. And that represents one important approach of, of the arts and crafts movement to, to domestic space. But there was another approach to arts and crafts domestic interiors, perhaps best exemplified by Edinburgh architect Sir Robert Lorimer. And Lorimer had a particular impact here in Montreal. A number of his disciples and students emigrated to Canada and set up practice uh, in the city. Uh, these included a number of people that were involved with the architecture department at McGill, people like Percy Nobbs, Ramsey Traquair, and an architect, David Shannon, who Frederick Cleveland Morgan commissioned to do the designs for his house here in Centerville. David Shannon primarily designed houses and later hotels, for example, the Chateau Richelieu, Chateau Laurier renovations uh, in, in Ottawa, and uh, some of the railway hotels in Western Canada. He did a few houses, uh, and Le Sabot is really one of the finest. It was built in 1912. As I mentioned, James Morgan had sold Greystains, the old family summer house next door, and Cleveland Morgan decided that he wanted to raise his new family with the same kind of access to water and nature that he had enjoyed as a boy. Working with the very closely, I think, working with David Shannon, Le Chabot began to take shape. This other approach that I mentioned to arts and crafts interiors was more eclectic. It might be characterized by what we could call a, a kind of country life magazine look. Uh, people were interested in vernacular building traditions, as all the arts and crafts architects were, but they wanted to furnish the house instead of with a uh, uh, contemporary fashionable furniture, they chose instead to gather a wide range of traditional, uh, often quite humble furniture uh, to decorate and uh, furnish the, the houses. This staircase is a good example of that approach. James Morgan had salvaged it during the renovations, restorations, we might say, to the Chateau Ramsay in old Montreal. And uh, it's a Georgian staircase. When the uh, renovations were done to the chateau, they wanted to restore it more to its uh, uh, French regime uh, um, appearance. And this staircase was removed and put in storage. Uh, and when it came time to build this house, Shannon and Morgan, Cleveland Morgan, that is, uh, decided to incorporate it into the entrance hall uh, as a means of access to upstairs. So in a sense, Le Sabot represents a kind of fusion of colonial Montreal. The two dominant characteristics of its, its material culture, the architecture of the French regime, and the interiors of the Georgian regime and the fine furniture associated with that time, kind of set the frame uh, of the house, to which Morgan added objects gathered from all over the world, for everything from pre-Columbian pottery to Chinese antiquities to uh, uh, French provincial furniture, uh, uh, Renaissance pieces, and so on. Another characteristic of this country life approach to arts and crafts domestic space was a strong interest in gardens and horticulture. Morgan himself had done his university training as a biologist, and he was a particularly avid gardener and was very, very interested in cultivation of uh, things like irises and peonies, developed a number of unique varieties, uh, which he named for members of his family. And the uh, gardens of Le Sabot, in a sense, were very famous at the time. They were widely published. The windows of the house are placed low on the walls, so that when you're seated, your eyes flow out into the gardens which surround the house. It's an unusually bright and sunny interior, 
I think this was a deliberate contrast to the houses of his parents' generation, which were somber and dark and uh, rather, rather moody. From today's perspective, Le Sabot might seem like a grand and imposing country home, but it always stops short of fussiness. Morgan carefully balanced kind of studied elegance with an informality. Good example of that is the contrast between this long, formal, early Georgian dining table and this magnificent early Quebecois armoire. Morgan was one of the pioneers of collecting the art of New France and, and uh, later Quebecois uh, folk art. As a boy, Cleveland Morgan would walk to the north along the highway in front here, and he would pass four or more uh, quite beautiful Quebecois stone farmhouses. I think they were a formative influence. He traveled abroad, he was familiar with the great museums of Europe, but this vernacular architecture of this place where he was born had a particular appeal for him. And as a young man, he began to collect furniture and decorative arts uh, of New France and Quebec. And when it came time to build Les Sabots, David Shannon, the architect, was readily disposed to build the house in the vernacular style of this place. Vernacular architecture was a hallmark of all the arts and crafts movement. The idea was wherever you were, you would use local materials, local craftsmen, and the authentic architecture that had developed in a place. So arts and crafts architecture in Quebec, according to this theory, should embody the look and the feel of traditional Quebecois architecture. The furnishings selected by Morgan for the house represent the full range of his interests, but a kind of primacy of place was given to the art of, and decorative arts of this place. Morgan's commitment to vernacular furnishings for the house went as far as to ask local farm women uh, who still wove and, and uh, did uh, traditional textile work who lived along the road here to weave Catalan rag carpets for the floors uh, in the house. And he established a close relationship with the pioneering antique dealers in Montreal who had begun to offer traditional Quebecois furniture to their clients. The first of these was a man who we remember as one of the most important arts and crafts um, artisans in Canada, Paul Beau, who was an extraordinary metal worker, but he began his career as, a, as an art dealer and, and uh, he provided uh, beautiful pieces of metal work uh, that, that Morgan incorporated into the building of the house and also uh, used as lamps uh, throughout the bedrooms. Morgan sourced furniture such as armoires and chairs from dealers such as Baron in, in, in Montreal. These vernacular elements of decor blended very, very well with uh, the more modest European furniture that Morgan loved. Things like these Windsor chairs, French Provencal furniture, rougher uh, Italian uh, and Spanish uh, Renaissance and Baroque era pieces. When Cleveland Morgan's ancestors arrived from Scotland in Georgian Canada and what was then Lower Canada, they set up business in Montreal as merchants of luxury commodities, domestic uh, furnishings, and so on. And some of the Georgian pieces in the house were bought as new contemporary design at that time and passed down in the family. This commitment to high quality contemporary design remained a hallmark of the Morgan family, both in their business and in their, in their own interiors. In his travels, Cleveland sourced excellent contemporary design for the store uh, throughout his travels. For example, this tile, uh, Gennari tile, designed by Gio Ponti, the outstanding 20th century Italian designer, was acquired in the 1920s. In the 1950s, pieces such as these Wedgwood uh, cups and jugs, designed by Eric Revilius, were sold in the store, and, and uh, evidence of that is here in the house. Morgan's father had been an outstanding patron of contemporary Montreal artists, such as Gagnon and Maurice. In Cleveland's generation, he was 
interested in work, for example, by his cousin, John Lyman, or by Goodrich Roberts. And in later years, he was an enthusiastic supporter of contemporary abstract artists, such as the automatists. He arranged for Paul-Emile Bordois to have exhibitions in the gallery in the Morgan's department store on Phillips Square. So while the house certainly evidences the kind of breadth of historical perspective that we see reflected in the collection Morgan developed for the museum, it didn't stop there. He was an enthusiastic supporter of the art of his own time, often struggling with other members of the museum's acquisitions committee to acquire contemporary art, uh, often not succeeding. But um, Morgan's commitment to contemporary art was as solid as his interest in the past. As a donor and collector of an unusual breadth of vision, Cleveland Morgan's contribution to the cultural heritage of Montreal and to Canada is truly unique. A sabot is a uniquely Canadian expression of the country house tradition. While the vision of David Shannon and Cleveland Morgan has allowed the house to evolve over more than a century, only the passing of time will resolve its future destiny.